Hey there, Tim Shabanowitz here. About to go embark on lesson 12, client interaction. But as always, we have our quote that we're gonna start off this lesson. And this one's by Tim Brown, CEO of IDEO. Uh, and it's not us versus them, or even us on behalf of them. For a design thinker, it has to be us with them. So take 28 seconds or so, think about that, and we'll see you on the other side. So client interaction is super important when you're designing spaces uh, as an architect, engineer, whatever, whatever have you. Sometimes you're gonna go in with a really good rapport with the client. Uh, sometimes you'll be talking with them all the way through the process. Sometimes you won't have any uh, interaction with the client, so therefore you need to actually try to guess and wow them. And the best way to kind of go about both of those processes is to go through the process called design thinking. Uh, design thinking, uh, is kind of a five-step process. Uh, so design thinking is a kind of a five-step process that you go through, and those steps are uh, empathy, defining, ideating, prototyping, and testing. Now let's break those down. All right, empathy is basically you have to step into the shoes of the client that you are trying to design for and try to solve their, their problems or even find the problems that they need that you need to solve for. Uh, so if you do that very well, then you are going to satisfy the client. The next step after that is once you find out what uh, their problems could be, you have to define at least one very big problem uh, that you want to solve for because you cannot solve all the problems at once. You have to actually kind of divide it up. It's kind of like taking a bite out of an elephant, right? You have to take it one bite at a time. <laughs> um, so define one problem that you want to solve for. And then you want to ideate. And by ideation, this is kind of what you're doing now when you're looking at the, the room that you're contemplating to redesign. You're trying to define different, you're trying to ideate different options that could satisfy the problem and thus the client. So you should have, ideation should look like uh, a lot of different options all in front of you, lots of sketches, lots of ideas. No idea goes, uh, is, is wrong here at this point. You just want to get it out there. At the end of ideation, you want to prototype. Now you're not gonna wanna prototype all those ideas. You wanna just pick one and solve it, solve for it and, and see how that works. You kinda wanna start as a low resolution, kinda like a real quick, maybe some cardboard, some paper, something that's not gonna cost a lot or take a lot of time. But you wanna prototype it and then test it. Test it and see if it works. If it works, great. Then you can include that in your design and that's it. If it doesn't, you go back to the beginning and start the process all over again. So a note about testing. Uh, when you're in this early phases of doing design thinking, you wanna make sure you stick with the low resolution stuff uh, before you do the high resolution stuff. Low resolution means really quick prototypes, something that's really small, maybe it's paint swatches, maybe it's trying to figure out what color looks good or what fabric looks good. This might kind of incorporate into a quick little mood board, which we'll get to a little bit later. But really you're just trying to get a quick feedback on the uh, design solution that you're trying to prototype. It may be good, and then you can move on to more high resolution stuff where you're actually doing the full room. Or if it's not good, you didn't spend that much time on it, uh, you failed fast, and now you can go back and try something else that's new that doesn't take a lot of time. But by doing these low res, quick turnaround type things, you're going to get a better uh, product in the end because the client will be happy. Um, it's also important to go not only to the client, but also try to test things out with different user groups. As we defined earlier, user groups are just other people that might use spaces, um, uh, use that space that you're designing. Uh, so if you're designing a classroom, sure, your teacher is your main client, but also students use that room. Other administrators might use the room. Other groups in general might use the room. So it's good to test out with them as well to make sure that you're uh, going in the right direction. So before moving on to designing for them and not you, uh, just know that design thinking isn't really a linear process. So you might be hopping around all over the place and just trying to figure it out. But just know that you try to want to encompass the whole design thinking process 
those five words, empathy, define, ideate, prototype, and test, okay? If we go to the next page, uh, designing for them, not you. It's really hard to separate yourself from your client. Yes, you may be super involved and really want it badly, but really, you're again, you're the designer, and if it's not your classroom, you have to kind of step away and step into their shoes and make sure that you have the client's best, uh, uh, the client's uh, needs in view. You have to be designing for them. So you can take this uh, Venn diagram we have here on the page here, and you can kind of see where your design ideas are. And if you have the ability to talk to your client and conversate with them, you can see where they're at. And more than likely, you're gonna find an intersection there. And that's probably where uh, your uh, best prototypes will lie because you can actually uh, you know, be on the same page and be excited for the same thing. So challenge yourself to think outside uh, your own uh, opinions and make sure that, that the client is top of mind. Uh, assumptions are the enemy. You don't want to assume anything. You want to make sure that you have all the ideas out there in front of the client and hopefully the client can give you the feedback that is needed. Do not assume. Okay? After a long time trying to go through the design thinking process, you may ultimately come to the point where you have to do a final pitch. Sometimes you might do multiple pitches all the way leading up, which is great, but sometimes you have to work, 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 and then you do a final pitch. You need to succinctly convey your idea to the client as quickly and as elaborately as you can. I know that sounds kind of like the opposites, but you need to make sure that the client is engaged and is in love with what you're doing, otherwise your pitch is gonna be useless. You also can't pitch for you know, 10 hours because they're gonna get bored. You have to get quick into the point. So that means you need to have good vocabulary, you need to have a good story, you need to have good drawings, and in a perfect world, those drawings tell the story and you are just supplementing those drawings. And that's what you're doing when we are designing this classroom space. And just one more thing about the pitch, right? Go in there confident, go in there, don't be defensive, Make sure it's clear, so you've got to rehearse. you got to make sure that you can communicate well. And you can practice by communicating to other people and make sure they understand it. But if your client does not understand it, they're gonna be confused, and therefore, the whole process does not work. So make sure you are clear with the client. One thing that uh, could happen during the pitch is the client asks you a question that you're not prepared to answer. Obviously, you've done a lot of rehearsals and you have most of the answers, but sometimes that happens. Again, don't go on the defensive. The best thing they always say is, that's a great thought. Let me get back to you on that and we can definitely see if we can incorporate that into the idea. So do not go back and, and be, again, defensive about your idea. You're just trying to walk in lockstep with the client to a final solution. So on this page, on, on the next page, uh, there's a couple things that you can look at here. We'd like you to, some common phrases that we do in design thinking is, I like, I wish, I wonder. Uh, so start filling those out. Uh, kind of brainstorm some ideas for the space that you're trying to design. Um, and uh, that'll help you, just fill it out. Uh, and then that'll help you with some ideas that you still need to address later on or help others in your group find out what things you need to fill out later on in the group. So I hope that video helped. Good luck, and we'll see you on the next one.